15th work session for the Newton County Board of Education. If you guys would please join me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Superintendent Fury, I think we have a special recognition. Um, we do. Dr. Lockhart, are you going to start us with the video? Please could call your attention to the, the video footage. Um, do you want to turn the lights off? That yes. Right. If someone can dim the lights for us, please. And then once we view the video footage, I, I will have a few words to say here. All right, uh, we're going to just show you a video of uh, a situation that took place, and, and we believe that sometimes seeing is, is believing. So we're going to just show you something here momentarily. Oh, take it out. <laughs> Wait on now. This is where I call for Mosaic. Okay, here we go. Okay, got it. Uh, see, I said his name in it. <clears throat> this is traveling to school on um, an Indian Creek route on Highway 36 in the morning. <coughs> sure that I could have pulled that off in my own vehicle, let alone a bus with students um, on its way to school. So uh, we felt that it was most appropriate to um, call our uh, Miss Karen Jenkins um, to a meeting of the board so that we could recognize her for her efforts. Um, so tonight I would like to recognize Miss Karen Jenkins, who is a school bus driver for our school system, and ask her to come forward to accept a certificate of recognition from our school board chair, Mrs. Shaquilla Henderson Baker. We are very proud to have Miss Jenkins here this evening, as she, without a doubt, prevented many of our students um, becoming injured 
or worse. Um, I just really thought that um, the potential for the lives of many people to change um, dramatically, had she not been at the wheel, um, driving that bus is, is huge. And so um, we really appreciate your hard work, Ms. Jenkins. We thank you for caring about our children. We thank you for having the wherewithal to, to handle something that many, many, many people could not do. Um, I know that I would probably have been a wreck if that had happened to me. Um, and so we appreciate that you um, follow our procedures and protocol. You check first on our students to make sure they were okay. Um, and what we see in that video footage is nothing short of miraculous. Um, you stopped that bus <laughs> on a dime. And um, we are so proud of you. And thank you so very much um, for your commitment to our, to our school system. Thank you. I want to make one comment, please. I feel the view of this picture personally, and I know exactly what you were going through and what you felt and the emotions behind it because you exercised some of the most dynamic decision-making that a person can use in a vehicle like that. I can speak from personal experience in this school system that you were just second to being miraculous in that. I applaud your actions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, that concludes our special recognition. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, again, we can't thank you enough um, for your, your hard work. We appreciate you. Okay, I don't think we have any public participation. Okay. I need a motion to approve the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Okay. Been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. I need a motion to approve the minutes, please. So moved. Second. Moved and properly second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. Superintendent's report. We'll have operations first. Yes. Uh, we'll have this. Okay, Ms. Robinson. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. In tonight's financial report, um, the Newton County School System's SPLOS 3 distribution is $910,024, which is an increase of $40,722 from our November collection. Total SPLOS 3 received for the first 59 months is approximately $51 million $51,804 million, I'm sorry, $51,804,335, averaging $878,40 per month. In comparison, SPLOS 2 averaged $830,490 per month for, the, for 60 months of those collections. The November TAVT collection was $54,843. Number two, the property tax revenue collections are 80.15% 80 collected this year versus 78.85% collected last year at this time. Expenditures are within budget and slightly better than last year with 47.60% expended this year versus 48.26% expended last year at this time. Any questions? I have none. Do any other board members have a question? I have none. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Madam Chair, board members, um, the operations report, um, just a few items to bring to your attention. Maintenance and operations. Maintenance received 781 work requests in December with 665 having been completed. There are 116 remaining work orders in progress. Student transportation, as we've all noticed, um, gas has been decreasing lately. And, and here, the average per gallon cost for diesel fuel purchased through December was $2.66. Uh, this same time in December 2013, the average cost of fuel was $3.33. 
school nutrition, a few things to bring to your attention. Item number two, there were a total of 101,000 breakfast meals served in December. There were a total of 221,000 lunches served in December. Um, that's an overall district average, about 79% for the month. The Newton County School Nutrition Program, as you know, we always try to feature our locally grown foods, and so this month we featured locally grown fresh broccoli as the farm to the school produce item for December. Uh, in addition to the operations report, I would like to draw your attention, uh, it should be on the next page, it is the nurses report. Uh, just a, it's a quarterly report of what's been going on with our nurses, just so you can see the kind of um, volume and traffic that they get. The top, the number one thing that we're seeing that the nurses are having to report, medication doses. So again, just giving children uh, medicines, and that was a little over, uh, uh, that was about 10,000 uh, 10,000 inquiries, so pretty pretty high. Uh, next, we had illness visits, uh, about 8,000 of those. Uh, and then the third thing was parent calls, and there are about 3,000 parent calls that were made. So just want to show you that our nurses, they, they stay pretty busy. The next thing I'd like to share with you uh, is the alternative education program. Um, an inquiry was made about alternative education and basically, can we do the same thing that our current ombudsman program is doing um, and, and, and save money? There are a lot of things that ombudsman, they, they perform for us that we could do ourselves, but if we were to try to keep their program just at the same basic rate uh, and by doing it internally with the same number of staff that they use, with the same student number of 200, um, our cost breakdown, it told us to be about $1.3 million if we were to try to do it internally. The vast majority, nearly a million dollars, uh, would have to be dedicated to the staff you need in order to keep that going because, again, it's a, it's a, um, it, it runs pretty much from 8 to about 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. So, again, it, it, there are a lot of staff that are involved, and they all have to be highly qualified. So that is why you have to have such a diverse group. In comparison, <laughs> The current ombudsman contract is $1.2 million, so there is a savings for the district, and the quote that was given at $1.3 million does not include food, does not include food preparation, office furniture, classroom furniture, supplies, indirect costs such as utilities. In addition, there is currently no available space in unoccupied school facilities that would not require extensive renovations for serving students. So just want to give you an update on that as well. That concludes the operations report. Are there any questions? I have a couple of comments on the comparison that you made. Yes, sir. And, and quoting you in part that there are no provisions or no space available. Yes, sir. Why we not? Why we should not be able to pursue the same aspects that we did for the 50 uh, kids? My bottom line: put them in Newton High. The only issue with Newton High, with the remaining portions of the building, again, it would be extensive renovation. Um, that building has been phased out. We can look at that, and we can and we can even try to figure out what the cost would be. But it would it would be a pretty uh, expensive endeavor for us to look at. That. And what happened the, at Newton High, the old ninth grade wing where the STEM Institute is, keep in mind that was the newest addition. That was the addition that was um, most up to par for trying to hold students. Everything else, uh, it, it really is not, um, not, not the best <coughs> option. There's no space in the new wing, that's what you're saying? Yeah, no, sir. Everything's all, everything that could be used has already been dedicated. I have uh, one question. Uh, uh, I think the program is doing uh, what it was designed to do. My only concern is that uh, the total number of students that we have there, if we're paying for unoccupied students that's not there, my question is, yes, sir. what's our average number of students attending ombudsman? 
Uh, good question, sir. Uh, what we're doing is you will get an annual report from Ombudsman, and what we're doing is just tracking the numbers. Again, we talked about our PBIS program. We feel is making an impact. We feel that um, behaviors are decreasing and positive um, uh, actions are increasing. So what we'll do is look at a comparison study. Our contract renewal is, is technically up in 2017. And so prior to contract renewal, we'll look at what our actual usage is. And then if, if we see that we're averaging, say, 100 students, then definitely we'll make an adjustment exactly. so that we could do, do better. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, CIT. Yes, ma'am, CIT report. I, I just want to draw your attention to um, just a few things. Item number nine, um, again, going back to ombudsman, just so you're aware, beginning in January 6th, a total of 16 middle school students and 30 high school students returned to their zone school from ombudsman, so those are the ones that transitioning back to the home school. Uh, item 13. 23 business education students from Indian Creek Middle participate in a job shadowing event on December 9th. Those students were exposed to a wide range of work environments ranging from automotive repair shops to law offices, just to show you that we are always trying to make sure that we are preparing children for the workforce. Uh, and the other thing is item 16, uh, that's literacy day competitions were held for elementary and middle school students in the areas of poetry, recitation, drama, and uh, ready writing. The winners from our district competition will compete at Griffin Risa, and, um, and that's in February. And I had a chance to witness all of that, and they did an absolutely awesome job. So our students, they're really doing some spectacular work out there. Uh, when we look at the enrollment report, as of January 9th, the enrollment report was 19,708 students. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, in last year, this same time, it was 19,387. So we have an increase of 321 students. And that, and that concludes the enrollment report. OK. You have a presentation. Yes, Anybody have questions before you start a presentation on the enrollment for the CIT? OK. You can proceed, Dr. Lockhart. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have a presentation. I don't want to take away from our presenter. So what I will do is uh, introduce to you Ms. Shakita Perry. She is our Project Aware Project Director, and I'll allow her to come up at this time, and she'll share a little bit of information to you about Project Aware. Thank you, Dr. Lockhart, and good evening to the board members, um, family, community leaders. Good evening. Good evening. I am Shakita Perry. Program Director for the Project AWARE program for the Newton County School Systems. For those of you who may not be familiar with Project AWARE, Project AWARE is a five-year grant program that was developed and designed to help make our youth, community, and schools safer, while in turn increasing access and awareness to mental health care services. Our focus is to provide trainings and resources to help aid in early detection and interventions, as well as provide a safe and secure environment for our youth so that they can focus on learning and reaching their full potential. Let's take a look at the film projector at the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, where 20 students and six teachers were shot and killed by a mentally ill gunman who also killed his mother and himself. And since this shooting, there have been at least 95 other school-related shootings. Also, statistics show that bullying is on the rise in our school systems. Statistics report that 34% of our students between the ages of 12 and 18 were bullied at school, while 4% report being cyber bullied. In the wake of our increased violence, youth suicide and homicides, disruptions in schools, clearly there is a public outcry for help. We see in the media devastating school shootings and the dramatic impact of bullying and peer pressure in our schools. We see the negative effects of alcohol and drug abuse among our youth. But what do all of these cases have in common? Statistics have shown that in most of these cases, there was some form of mental health care issues or concerns in earlier onset where parents, students, uh, teachers, or community People in the community said that those mental health care issues were prevalent but were, went undetected. 
this is very important because early detection can increase a positive outcome with our youth. Undetected and untreated issues can escalate and lead to anxiety among our youth, depression, poor school outcomes, performances, isolation, truancy, legal problems, aggressive behaviors, and the worst case scenario, suicide. Unfortunately, mem memories of all of these tragic events serves to us as a constant reminder why early detection is a must. This is a growing problem. You may wonder how did Project AWARE get its start? In January 2013, President Barack Obama incorporated a Now is the Time program. Now is the time to keep our youth safer through early detection and gun control. Project AWARE was developed under this umbrella through the State Educational Agency. And we here, Team Impact, which is our local educational agency here in Newton County. Newton County was one of three counties that was fortunate enough to, to receive funding under this grant. We will work in collaboration with the Department of Juvenile Justice, Law Enforcement, Department of Family and Children's Services, our school systems, as well as community outreach programs. Team Impact was designed and, and created to improve our mental health in people and our communities together. We bring to you a wealth of experience in social work, counseling, crisis interventions, early detections, youth mental, first aid, mental health first aid trainings. Our team consists of a mental health clinician, which we have here, Mr. Naran Butler. I would like to ask him to stand or wave your hand. Um, Mr. Butler is very excited to be a part of our program. We are really, really excited to have him aboard. He's full of energy and enthusiasm, and I feel that our school could really, really benefit from his experience. Also, we have three trainers with, which are trained in the area of first aid and mental health. Team Impact's goal is to focus on early interventions and detections. It is our, it is our um, objective to make sure that our children stay on a positive trajectory as well as become productive citizens in our community. So on behalf of our team, team, Team Impact, we are delighted to expand the capacity of bringing mental health awareness into our schools and communities through collaborative efforts. We are excited and we look forward to working with our, our different schools because we feel that teamwork makes the dream work. And it really does take a village to raise a child. Today, I challenge myself and I also challenge our team as well as the board to Believe in yourself and say, if it is to me, it is, if it is to be, it is up to me. It is up to us as educators, as, as community leaders, to be the eyes and ears of our children, to hear their voice and speak and, and serve them in our community. Thank you, and we're really excited. Do you have any questions for us at this time? I have a couple of questions, or I may have one question. I'm sorry, mental health. Um, where did the referrals come from for the kids that you guys are going to be working with? The referrals are going to come from our teachers. We're going to um, upload a form on the portal, and um, the teachers will be able to download that form if they if they detect red flags mm -hmm. um, in our children. They will download the information off the portal and fill it out. And, and then report, give it to the school counselor okay. who will review the information and then provide it to the school principal. And the principal will have to sign off on it and then they will give it to us to follow up okay. with the wraparound services. If, okay. if I may add with that, is that um, through the five year period, it'll be a training process. The three mental health trainers, they're gonna go out and they're gonna train all of our staff. Uh, they also will open it up for community members so that we can all begin to identify and detect mental health issues. Because again, sometimes we think we know, but again, we're gonna get that training. So that way, when we make referrals, we'll be able to make the most educated referral possible. That was gonna be actually my next question, Dr. Lockhart, you know how I think. Um, Cause my next question was going to be the state offers and Mental Health America offers a community state um, 
CPR, first aid CPR mental health training that you can have for your community. So that was going to be my next question. Are you guys going to look at doing that since the grant is here now? It, what it is is um, it, we, our training, uh, they had, the trainers had to be certified. They had to go through a week-long process. They have to complete a, the, the people who are participants have to complete an eight-hour training that has been designed along with the uh, SAMHSA grant uh, uh, specifications. Mm -hmm. So again, the exact, uh, the exact training certification that they receive will be based upon the SAMHSA grant. Okay. And then the kids that get referrals, how will the counseling take place to make sure that it is um, private and within HIPAA guidelines so that nobody else in the school system will know that when they see the counselor coming along and know that he's a mental health counselor, they may be bullied in that aspect. So what's the plan for that? Actually, we're looking at, uh, we were talking about that today about trying to find the right location for Mr. Butler. So everything will be pretty discreet. We went around and talked to all the schools. Who, actually, we're going to focus on the PBIS schools first. Okay. Those are your middle schools, Newton High School, and uh, Alcove High School is also going to be a part of it. So what we'll do is set up a discrete area so that, that he can go in and then students can come down and see him and we can try to make sure that everything's as professional as possible. Okay. Okay. I have two questions. <clears throat> Number one, is there a certain criteria that uh, a student must meet in order to be able to participate in the program? Number one. No, only if they display different red flags. Um, as Dr. Lockhart stated earlier, the, the teachers and the staff are going to go through a training and if they, normally the, the teachers are the ones that are working with the students, so they notice the changes in behaviors more so than, you know, a lot of times the parents, because the students are with them majority of the time. So if they notice different red flags, it's not a criteria, but, you know, just a red flag that may let them know that it may be something going on in the. The only, <coughs> other, only other thing is that they have to be between the ages of 11 and 18. 18 right. Mm -hmm. And second question, will the parents be made aware of the program where they may feel more comfortable and not going through the school but contacting someone that can put their child there which kind of address what uh, Ms. Baker was referring to uh, to kind of go around actually being through the school that they can contact uh, you guys can would the parents be familiar with this program Part of the program the first step was really we wanted to make sure that you all had a chance to see what's going on now what happens is the development of a management team. Um, there is this internal small team, but we're going to uh, add the people who are in the board office, that the district office, who can go and support. But we're also going to get external people, DJJ, uh, DFEX, all of those different outreach entities. They'll be part of this as well. And so what we're going to do is push out to the community and let them know that we're out here so that it doesn't have to always go through the school, per se, right. but there'll be a variety of outlets. Uh, because, again, depending on what type of partnership we get, um, DJJ may make referrals over to us. Right. So, again, we're going to be working with a lot of different groups. Great. Good. Any other questions? I have one. Uh, Dr. Lockhart, I, I know... Um, you understand that the, the rubber meets the road with our teachers. Right. And um, how, is there any way we can get a readout sometime in the future on how that training is going for those teachers? Uh, uh, those yes. red flags, those triggers, how, I just, I'm trying to imagine how they're going to um, be trained and, and understand what those triggers are. So. I'm trying to put myself in the place of a teacher. Can we get a readout on that later on that, how that's going? Yes, sir. Part of the program with, with a grant of this magnitude, there's an evaluation piece. And so, again, what we're actually we're going to a training tomorrow. And so we'll get more details as we uh, go to that. But there'll be an evaluation piece where we'll be able to see, you know, is it effective? Is it working? What do we need to tweak in order to get a better outcome? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you guys. I'm excited about this grant. Thank you all. Thank it's well needed. Okay. We have no old business. Moving on to new business. Okay. We have the calendar. The budget calendar. Ms. Ms. Bullard? Are you doing it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. 
FY16 tender budget calendar. The superintendent recommends the adoption of the FY16 tentative budget calendar. The budget calendar is set to coincide with the adoption of the final budget prior to the adjournment of the final board meeting in June. Once enrollment projections are finalized, schools will receive an allotment that will have projected student enrollments and staffing for the 15-16 school year. Staffing will be based on maximum class size as approved by the State Board of Education. Guaranteed budgets will be based on the same amount per projected student as applied to 14-15 initial allotments, and those amounts are indicated on the attached calendar. The calendar provides time for principals to discuss budgets and receive input from their staff prior to submitting their guaranteed budget. Time is set aside for the board to hold budget work sessions and public, public hearings as may be needed or required. And the um, budget calendar is attached for review. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you, Dr. Lockhart. Mr. Satterfield, you have item B. And on this item, you guys, we will need approval. Uh, the superintendent recommends the approval of the attached, attached agreement between the Newton County School System and Tawana Jackson for providing speech language services to students with disabilities. Currently, we have a SLP vacancy. Uh, the system is required to provide speech therapy for students whose IEPs recommend those services, and the service will be provided through a contact contractual agreement, which is attached. Okay. Do we have any questions for Mr. Satterfield? Okay, no questions. I'll ask for a motion to approve item B. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Item C, Ms. Lumens. Good evening. Good evening. For item C, the superintendent recommends the annual renewable contract awarded to Jan Pack Incorporated of Austell, Georgia for a comprehensive custodial program be renewed for an additional term. The effective date will be January 21st, 2015, and the expiration date will be January 20th, 2016. The vendor has performed satisfactorily, met all contractual re requirements, and has agreed to continue under the same terms and conditions of the original <coughs> contract. The estimated contract value, value is $463,140. This cost will be paid for with budgeted FY15 general funds. This concludes item C. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Lumens? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Barr, you have item D. Good evening. In item D, the superintendent recommends the identified items be declared surplus and disposed of per board policy DO. The items for your consideration are from Eastside High School and Indian Creek Middle School. That concludes item D. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Barr? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shattuck, you have E, F, and G. Good evening. Good evening. Ms. Fury, Madam Chairwoman, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Item E is for a contract for interactive panels. The superintendent recommends the annual renewable contract for interactive panels be awarded to Encore Technology Group of Greenville, South Carolina. The effective date will be January 21st. 2015 expiration date will be January 20th 2016 now as a little background information in 2004 we started buying interactive technology for classrooms and the first items we bought were the interactive whiteboards or the active boards is the brand that we chose to use those we used those we bought those and put them in classrooms for nine years the Achilles heel of interactive whiteboards is the projector and the bulb. And, and so we've had to spend a lot of money replacing bulbs and replacing projectors over the years. In 2013, when we opened up Newton High School, we decided to go with interactive projectors instead. First of all, they were cheaper in cost, and we felt like that was a better investment 
and still kept the interactivity in the classrooms. We still allowed the schools who wanted the interactive whiteboards to still buy those. Just this year, we were, have been looking at interactive panels as a replacement for the last two years, but the cost was prohibited. Finally, this year, the price of interactive panels came down to the cost of an interactive whiteboard, and we felt this was the better solution as we move forward. And the reason it's a better solution is it doesn't have a projector. So we don't have that replacement bulb cost, we don't have that replacement projector cost, and uh, the life uh, expectancy of a panel is much longer than an interactive whiteboard. Interactive panel basically is a flat screen TV, but with a glass front, and it's interactive. So if you touch it with your hand, it's like you can move things on the, the, white, the panel just like you moved it on the whiteboards. And at the same cost that we're paying, we were paying for the interactive whiteboards, we feel like this is a much better solution. The, uh, company what we did to analyze which panel because we looked at 10 different panels from 10 different manufacturers at our technology conference last July and we asked every teacher to go by and analyze them and give us their opinion on what they thought was the best one we had 200 teachers look at those various panels that we had set up for them in the media center and overwhelmingly the teachers decided and, and the technology department was also felt the same way that the best one was the clear touch panel and so that's the one we decided to go with we had three bidders who bid on that and the um, encore technology group is the one who, who won that bid well i just applaud you on the method that you use to determine which one getting the young users involved we, 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 we haven't always done that, and I, I think I'm that aware. was a mistake <laughs> in the past. And it's very important that we get the end user and the teacher involved in the selection process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any other questions or comments? No. Nope. <clears throat> Item F, purchase of school system upgrades. The superintendent recommend recommends the school system upgrades needed for the school system be purchased from Infinity Network Solutions of Macon, Georgia. The background information on this was in 2002 when we moved into this building, we did a shift in how, what type of phones we were using. We went to a computer-based phone system as opposed to an analog-based phone system. And that worked fine, and, and we continued to grow. We started off small, I think it was four schools we started with, and then we grew into it as we went along. <clears throat> what happened though was in 2012, I believe it is, we, we originally decided on 3Com as our phone system. That, that's the name of the company. In 2012, 3Com was bought out by, maybe it's 2011, was bought out by HP. Hewlett-Packard and when they were bought out by Hewlett-Packard I talked with Hewlett-Packard and asked them to are they going to support the three comp phone system that we had in place they said they were six months later they end of life of the phone system and there's no way for us to get replacement parts or to buy additional um, services to support the phone system so we had to make a decision of what we were going to go with after reviewing the various options, we chose to go with the Cisco system, primarily because we knew they were going to a very large company that would not be bought out by anybody, so we wouldn't have to go through this problem again like we went through with, with 3Com. And so we're in the process of upgrading all of our phones to the Cisco system. We've done about four or five schools already, and this uh, item tonight is to do nine additional locations, and then next year we plan on doing the remaining locations. The, the units that were chose, the locations we chose, were chose because they were in the greatest need. These are the ones who are actually failing. We're, we're actually <coughs> having to patch them together to keep them working. 
If a system does fail and we have no way of repairing it or keeping it running, that school will be without any phones until we could buy a replacement Cisco system. So this is kind of a critical need for us. <coughs> the money to do this, $99,000 is coming out of the general fund. It was budgeted in my budget for this year. The additional 161000 is coming out of the capital projects funds. The Cisco system offers this redundancy. So if the server at a uh, the main server goes down at the network operations center, the individual schools will be able to operate on their own. Okay, do we have any questions for Dr. Shattuck on if? Okay, G. Item G, the purchase of E-rate subsidized technology infrastructure. The superintendent recommends the E-rate subsidized technology infrastructure needed for the school system be purchased from Infinity Network Solutions of Macon, Georgia. Now, if you'll remember back in August, we brought you this item to vote on, and you voted and approved it, but it, the numbers were different. And after you approved it and we started looking at implementing the work, we realized that we were, did not have enough wireless infrastructure built into the original bid. So we went back and using the original bid, using those pricing, we increased the amount of wireless we were going to put in these three schools. And so we're bringing it back to the board so they could approve the, uh, this additional funding that we're asking them to do. All this money is coming from budgeted splash funds. The three schools we're doing are Live Oak, Metal Ridge, and Liberty. And we found out when we opened up Newton High School that the, the kids are with their own personal devices that they're bringing into school, it overwhelmed our wireless infrastructure because we weren't anticipating those many personal mobile devices in our building. And so we've gone back and redesigned our infrastructure and we're putting a wireless access point in every classroom. And this way, all these schools will have enough robust wireless systems to accommodate the mobile devices that the students are bringing into school. Okay, do you have any questions for Dr. Shattuck regarding <coughs> item G? Okay, thank you, Dr. Shattuck. Thank you very much. Okay, item H and I, I have both of those. Let's start with item H, board meeting dates. I ask you guys to look through the proposed dates for the 2015 calendar and see if we need to change anything. No, there has been a couple of recommendations, possibly. Okay, um, December. Okay, December is one recommendation to move that up to the 8th. Would that conflict, is it the 8th? Let me put where I write it down. Okay, it was the 8th and then in June. Yeah, I'm gonna. It was the June. And the June. A recommendation to move that to the ninth. The June meeting, if when thinking about um, this past year with moving it earlier, I want to make sure, Miss Sanders, you're gonna you're gonna have to help me remember how 
we had an we it was a long period of time between the fir the meeting the early meeting and then all the way to the end of July for the next meeting which although you, you are gracious to um, allow us to get people to work we were hoping that we could try to move it a little bit later in June just so that we could have a board meeting to approve anybody recommended for employment in June and then be set up for for July so as you're considering the dates um, you know even if we finagled the July date too so maybe moving that one around um, I did notice and I, this may not be a big deal at all but the July date is the same night as high school open houses would that cause a conflict with any yes um, yeah, so that and the July meeting is later, but I see you have to accommodate the date of new hiring of teachers. In the past, the only reason why we have moved the June meeting up is because, but you guys will have quorum with three people here, but Abigail and myself both take vacation that time of the year every year. And so, well, don't you think it's time to change? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a set, locked in yeah. date for us. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, we know that um, we're, we're just throwing it but y'all will have three people y'all yeah, yeah, have yeah. quorum you can have it so that's fine I mean I I probably won't be here though so so what are we saying but do yeah. we need to move the July date from the 28th I mean is that a big conflict with it being the open houses that night I, I don't Miss Sanders what would you your recommendation for personnel specifically I would say not for us it would be a conflict okay so it would be it would be good if we could think about maybe moving that one. Okay. Um, so what would be that uh, week up? I'm trying to pull the other. <clears throat> well, if you move it to uh, move it up a week, that would be the week of the uh, the seventh. And so no, on July. 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 The twenty first. Twenty first. Oh, twenty first to the fourteenth. Okay. Okay, that'll work. So that that yeah, that's gonna be a problem too. Yeah, well, exactly. You have yeah, one person out or two people out. So I mean either way yeah, June is gone. June is gonna be a tough one. Yeah. Okay. Now the only thing is on that June twenty third, um, Mr. Turner, Mr. Johnson and uh, um Mr. Um uh, Edwards can't get sick. Because because <laughs> automatically we're saying it's gonna be three people. Yeah. So you're going <laughs> to, so. <laughs> well, I will be honest. We have not set our made reservations for our uh, vacation for that week. So there's a good possibility that if we set it that day, I can be there. Okay. So, of course, it's at your pleasure. So we're, we're, um, I'm, I'm we're good with um, whatever day that, you know, we're going to be at work. <laughs> um, so we're, we're happy to accommodate your I'm schedules. flexible. I, I don't okay. have a trouble. And then the July date, um, did you say the 21st? The 21st. The 21st. Okay. Ms. Sanders, does that work for you? It's just the week prior. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then December 8th. Yes. <clears throat> it's going to stay the same, yeah. the 23rd. 23rd and, then. and then 721. Madam Chair, we'll um, make the adjustments and prepare it for your vote um, at the next meeting with all the adjustments. Okay. Okay. That takes care of the calendar. The other item on the agenda, just want to remind you guys, next week we will need to elect a chairperson and a vice chair for the 2015 um, calendar year. And also, this is not on here, but we'll need to start thinking about a legislative liaison for the year as well to serve uh, for 2015. So, just... To get you excited about being interested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear the excitement. Okay. <laughs> okay. And item J, Dr. Lockhart. Item J, the superintendent requests that the board approve the personnel recommendations made during the executive session. Okay. 
Can I have a motion to approve item Second. J? Second. Been moved and properly second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you, Dr. Lockhart. Other matters of interest? Um, yes, Madam Chair, um, if I may. Um, following this um, action tonight, taking an item J for the recommendations made in executive se session, I'm pleased to announce the appointment of Mr. Darren Berry as Director of Student Services, effective January 14th, which is um, tomorrow. I think, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow. Mr. Berry holds a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from the University of Georgia, a master's in special education from the University of Georgia, and a specialist degree in educational leadership from Georgia College and State University. Mr. Berry has served multi roles throughout the school system, including a paraprofessional, not this school system, but throughout his career, paraprofessional, middle school teacher, middle school assistant principal. Currently, he serves as our hearing officer and our student services supervisor. Um, Mr. Berry's experience in student services will be an asset to our work as we continue the exemplary process that was made under the leadership of Ms. Renee Finley. Um, I'm confident that he will provide ongoing support to the district in his new role. And although he's not here this evening, I would like to formally congratulate uh, Mr. Berry. So thank you. Okay. Any other matters of interest? <coughs> okay. Can I? I have. A, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and properly second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.